Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. All right, so we're gonna take the tire off. Um, on most Volkswagens, there's little caps that go over these lugs. And the caps, you're gonna need the tool um, from the spare tire kit. You will put in and grab, it's like a hook, and you'll pull the cap out. But this vehicle does not have those on currently. So we're just gonna uh, loosen up the lugs with a 17 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. One at a time, just a little bit. Raising and jacking this vehicle, you're not going to want to use a jack or a jack stands on here on the control arms or on this aluminum um, because you may break the aluminum um, or there. Um, some places you can jack up from is over here where the pinch weld is. On this Volkswagen you can see there is specific spots where you're supposed to jack the vehicle or support the vehicle. These little arrows indicate that and right on the pinch weld is the strongest part to be jacking and supporting. And same over here. This side little arrow pointing down. This one looks like it got smashed a little bit. So we're going to take off the lug, the lugs. Volkswagen has lug bolts, not lug nuts or lug studs. So you need to be careful when Pulling off the wheel. And then you grab the wheel. It comes right down. Next, we're going to take off this retainer that holds the caliper to the bracket. You can use needle nose or a straight screwdriver. Just pull that part out first. Comes right off. Now we're going to pull off the caliper slide bolts, but before we do that, there is these caps that go over. I believe this one has one missing, but you can just take a small screwdriver, pry it out, and pull it off. Next, we're going to use a seven millimeter Allen and a ratchet to take out the caliper bolts. If it doesn't come out completely, that's okay. It just needs to be backed off so we can pull the caliper off. All right, on this vehicle, um, on the driver's side, sometimes they have pad sensors. Um, this is the connector for the pad sensor. So before you pull the caliper off on the driver's side, you're gonna wanna disconnect this one. This one is actually broken as you can see, but to release it, you just slide that out. You can put a little screwdriver in here, straight. Just bend it back slightly. And be careful, because the plastic might break. There we go, and it clicked, and that's good. Now we're gonna pull off the caliper. We're gonna pull straight back. We pull off the pad one at a time. This pad comes out straight like that because there's clips on it. There's the sensor.
Then we're gonna hang our caliper with a bungee cord. So it doesn't fall. You don't wanna put any strain on the brake line. Next, we're gonna take this caliper bracket off. We're gonna take off this, these two 21 millimeter bolts, the socket and the breaker bar. Take the two bolts loose. So loose, you can do it by hand. Or you mean you pull them out, you're gonna take the bracket, slide it out towards the front of the car. Now we're gonna wanna separate our rotor from the hub. There is this little T30 screw. You use a T30 bit, a Torx, and a ratchet. Loosen it. Holding the rotor in case this one's pretty solid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a lug nut in there. All right, because the rust has built up on the hub, it has caused the rotor to stick to the hub. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna break that rust free. We're gonna use a hammer. We can hammer all around this area. Um, if you are reusing your rotor, you would not wanna beat on the surface of the rotor. So sometimes they're tricky. Sometimes they're harder than that. Um, in worst case, you use a bigger hammer or sometimes some rust penetrant. You can spray in the holes and let it sit for a while. And pull off the rotor. Here you can see the old part versus our new part from 1aauto.com. Um, you can see the pads are the same. This is the driver's side. The driver's side has a sensor in it. As you can pull this out, you're just gonna, the same as on the car, pull this little tab, and the connector slides out, the cover. And as you can see, you compare the two connectors, they're the exact same. If you look at the two brake pads, the brackets where they go into the caliper bracket are the same. And the two rotors, you can see the size, they are the same. If you compare them, um, these ones are drilled and slotted for added cooling and performance. On the website, you can see which side goes on which. They are different right to left. This one happens to be a driver's side. All right, so we're gonna clean up our caliper bracket. Uh, you're gonna take a wire brush, just get in here. This is where the pads will slide on the bracket. All right, before we put the new rotor on, we're gonna have to clean this area of the hub. We're gonna use a wire brush, make sure to get a good amount of the rust. All right, we're gonna put the new rotor on. Take our little Torx bolt, screw that in. Now we're gonna reinstall our caliper bracket, slide it over the rotor. 
Right, now we're gonna install our caliper bracket bolts. We're gonna torque our caliper bracket bolts. They're to a 155 newton meters on this vehicle. Now we're gonna use some channel locks to compress the piston. We're gonna do this very gently. You don't wanna squeeze too hard. As we're squeezing this, we didn't have to go very far. Um, normally, if your brakes were really bad, um, this piston would be out further. When you compress this, this is pushing brake fluid up into, back into your master cylinder reservoir. And when doing this job, because we're not cracking any lines or taking off any components, that have to do with that system. Uh, we do not have to bleed the brakes after finishing this job. So you want to double check um, to make sure you can check on our website. This is a driver's side rotor. As you can see, the fins are digging into the wind when the wheel is rotating. That is how this rotor is supposed to be on this vehicle. Um, but you can double check our website, 1aauto.com. So we're gonna put a little brake grease on the sliding components of the brake pads. And on the pad that's already in there. Good. And we're gonna take our caliper, keeping the pad sensor out of the way. Slide on our caliper. You're gonna take your caliper connector. Um, it's the warning. Um, when the brakes get thin, um, it will break the connection and it'll tell you your, your brakes are thin. So you plug that into there until it clicks and then it'll slide right back onto the bracket. All right, so we're gonna put the um, caliper slide bolts in. What we want to do is take a little bit of brake grease and grease them up. I'm going to insert our caliper slide bolts. We're gonna use our ratchet and our seven millimeter Allen socket. We're gonna torque these slide bolts to 15 Newton meters. We're gonna install this dust cap. It goes over where the caliper bolt goes in. Next, we're gonna put this um, retainer that goes on the outside of the caliper, keeps the caliper down where it's supposed to be on the pads. So um, what we like to do is push down into the hole using needle nose. It seems to work best. Get it in that hole and you can push the spring. Make sure you push it down. Now I'm gonna install the tire. Line up with the holes and hold it. And we'll use our 17 millimeter socket to put our lug studs on, or lug bolts. 
whatever you want to call it. Put our center cap on. Now we're gonna torque the lug studs to 120 Newton meters in a star pattern. When you do it in a star pattern, it makes the wheel go flush to the brake rotor properly. Be sure that after you do a brake job, you make sure that you pump the pedal um, because there is going to be an air gap between the caliper and the brake pads when you first start out. You want to make sure you get that caliper piston to go in. Whenever you change front end components or remove front end components and reinstall them, you always want to go to a local garage and have an alignment performed because you are going to change the geometry of the wheel and tire um, going down the road and you do not want premature wear on your tires. So you want to make sure you do that and you'll be all set. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.